Okay, so first off, if you could keep your mics uh, muted, uh, there will be a time later you can ask questions, but anytime you want to ask questions via chat, that's fine. OK, so uh, what I want to do is talk about where we're at in the course, uh, particularly with the midterm. And I want to talk through some stuff because I know I sent you some things, but I want to talk through a few things, uh, particularly about the midterm. And then what I want to do is just talk about the course and then answer any questions. So I don't want to take too much time. Uh, so let me talk uh, about the midterm. What I'm going to do here is um, put my screen on here. And let's do this. Uh, let's do this. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen, which is not much, but all right, there's there's the screen that I want to show. Uh, and this is talking about the midterm topics. Okay, and so, um, and again, those just joining us, if you have questions, there will be a time later for you to ask questions. So, all right, so here's some of the midterm topics. Now, the basics uh, are that the midterm will have eight problems, okay? And it will be multiple choice, okay? So the midterm is multiple choice, uh, just like your quizzes. So that's one of the reasons I've given you quizzes. You've had two quizzes, and students have generally done pretty well on them. Um, and each one of them had one multiple choice problem. This is going to be just like it, except you're going to have eight multiple choice problems, and you're going to have up to three hours if you want to take three hours. 180 minutes, eight multiple choice problems. Now, uh, you can take the exam either Monday at 7 o'clock, or you can take it Tuesday at 1 o'clock. Okay? You don't have to tell me which one you're showing up to. Don't do both, because if you do both, I'm only going to count the first one. Uh, but do one, the Monday night or Tuesday afternoon. Um, uh, they are different exams, but they're going to cover similar material. Uh, 180 minutes and, again, multiple choice, eight problems. And, by the way, you will see the whole exam at once, so you can jump back and forth the problems. You don't have to do a problem and then go to the next one. You can jump around, okay? Uh, also, some basics on this. Is that uh, let me let me write this down here. Let's see if you can see this. Got my new thing here. So let's see here if you can see this. So we got 180 minutes. There we go. We got eight problems. Okay, multiple choice. Okay, so that's the basics of it. That you've got all that and now the the main thing is let's talk a little bit about coverage okay so if we want to talk about coverage here go back to this screen here um, there are here's some different things I've got here this is more than eight uh, so not everything here necessarily will be on the midterm it can't be really I guess but these are all the things that I could possibly pull from so, for instance, there will be definitely one of the problems. In fact, it'll be the first problem. It will be either a MATLAB or Excel. Now, let me explain how that's going to work, okay? Because you're saying, how am I going to do code on a midterm? How am I going to do that? So, what we're going to do is we're going to work it backwards. Normally, in the class, I give you something and you have to write the code. This time, I'm going to give you the code, and you have to tell me what it says. Now, what to make it easier for you is I'm going to give you what it says in four different options. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, that's not bad. You know, this is easier. Uh, you got four choices, and you have to look at each four choice. Now, when I say what it says, I literally mean that. I literally mean what will be printed out on the screen. Uh, what will what will it be displayed? Okay, that's what I mean. I don't, you know, it's not going to be like a paragraph of description. It's literally just going to be what comes on the screen, like like that, you know, if you run that code. Now let's remember too that um, this is using the lockdown browser. Okay, so let me uh, let me jump to this too. So you got to use the lockdown browser, so you can't be running code or anything like that. You're going to be stuck in there. 
So you have to just be able to read the code and be able to tell me what it says. Uh, another thing that I recommend uh, that, and I want to make sure you know is that it is open book and open notes. But here's the deal. I know some of you only have an electronic book and maybe some of you only have electronic notes. So what do you do? Uh, because if you're in lockdown browser mode, uh, how are you going to do that? Well, I would recommend that you print some of that stuff out. Um, it would be better if you had a physical copy of the textbook. Also, uh, I'll, I'll talk about this in a moment. There's an equation sheet that I posted uh, that you might want to use too. You might want to print it. You know, Then you have it available. But you can have your book. You can have your notes. That's fine by me. Okay, You can have all that. Okay, um, And so and then, the, and like I said, the lockdown browser. So that's uh, that's important, and it has a webcam and all that. But we've already done two quizzes, so that shouldn't be too bad. All right. So let me go back here uh, before I jump. I don't want to jump too far here. Okay, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, so let me talk. So Matt, Matt Lover Excel, like I said, that's guaranteed to be on there. It'll be the first problem, and you have to interpret code. You don't actually write code. Now, there are seven more problems. So let me show you on the seven more problems where they are going to come from. So newton raphson what does it mean when I say newton raphson All right, so let me go to uh, the, let's go here. And this is, by the way, I got this. Let me show you where I got this. I'm going here on the Canvas site. And if I scroll down, I've got here a numerical method sample midterm. Now. I'll be honest with you. This isn't really that great of a sample midterm because your midterm is going to be different. Your midterm is going to be multiple choice. I've never done a multiple choice midterm before in numerical methods. Therefore, I don't really have any samples or anything like that. So, uh, but this is at least problems. Now, this is like a problem that you would have like MATLAB Excel. Notice that I give you the code and you th this test had you write what's displayed there. So in this case, you're going to see four options and you're going to choose it. But if you scroll all the way to the end of the sample test, um, you will see an equation sheet. Okay? So, yeah, there is. So, where do we access the equation sheet? It's right here. It's at the end of the sample. So, it says numerical methods equations right there. So, if you scroll to the end of the sample midterm, you'll see that on the last page. And you might want to print it. I mean, if anything, print that. Okay? So that you have that. So now, when I'm talking about Newton Raphson, where is that? Well, that's right here. If I can highlight it, I don't know. Well, uh, that one right there. I'm circling it right there, right? So it's x plus one equals x to the i uh, minus uh, function at x divided by the the derivative at x, right? So that's the uh, that's the Newton Raphson method for solving a roots problem of one variable. Then we got secant method, which is also solving a roots uh, problem of one variable. And that's the next one right here. Okay, right there. All right, secant method. Okay, so you should definitely practice that. I can guarantee you, absolutely positively guarantee you that at least one of these will be on there, Newton or secant. Maybe both, probably a good chance of both, honestly. So you definitely should study Newton, Raphson, and secant method. Now, this next one here says true error, approximate error. There probably won't be a problem for this. There probably won't be a problem that just talks about true error or approximate error. What it will be is it might be a part of a problem. So, for instance, I might have a problem and ask you to calculate the true error or the approximate error. And you should know the difference. Remember, the true error, you have to know the true value, whereas approximate error, you're only comparing the previous approximation to the current approximation, okay? And so that's the difference. And make sure you understand that in case I ask one or the other. Uh, I know you've seen that in your um, homeworks too. Uh, Taylor series, it is uh, in here, right? Yeah, there's the Taylor series right there. Probably not going to ask a question from it, but I might, but probably won't. Uh, bisection, bisection method, yeah, that's a good one. There is no real formula for bisection method, okay? The, you should review it. You've done homework on it. 
Um, it was also on the quiz, right? Quiz number two, I think, right? It was a bisection, right? So you should have seen it and done it a few times. So, you know, could come back. Matrix algebra. Now, with this, uh, I would recommend that you have a calculator uh, to make sure. Let's say I ask you to do some things with that. It's possible I could ask you to do some calculations uh, with your calculator. Of course, you have calculator with all of this, but uh, maybe one that can handle matrices. Um, I could ask you to multiply matrices, do a matrix inverse, uh, maybe some matrix concepts. Okay, maybe um, something to think about. Uh, Newton Raphson, Raphson for two nonlinear equations. Now we have that. It's right here. It's these two big equations, right? And with all the partial derivatives, okay? And you've done homework on that. Um, honestly, I think there's a pretty good chance we get one of those on the test, okay? So make sure you review how to do that. Uh, Gauss elimination. Yeah, now here's the problem with Gauss elimination. Um, in a multiple choice, um, you know, how do I really know you use Gauss elimination? I mean, I could maybe test you on what it's it's tough to test, okay? Probably instead I can just say, um, I could probably just say something to the effect of, um, you know, give me the answer, you know, give me, you know, or something like that, you know, just ask you to solve a system of equations. And you can use Gauss if you want to. Uh, so probably some kind of solution system of equations is good. Uh, you do it whatever way you want. Gauss Seidel. Now that I could ask you to because that sets up and it's a numerical iterative technique. So I probably could ask you something on that. That's probably not too bad. Now this one gets con gets people confused. Newton's method for optimization. This gets people confused. So make sure you understand. It's basically the same formula as Newton Raphson, except that we're doing optimization. So instead of it being the uh, the function divided by the first derivative, it's the first derivative divided by the second derivative, okay? So make sure you know that. You should have had homework on it. You, it's in the videos. But you should know the difference between newton raphson and Newton's method for optimization because they look really similar, okay? And then lastly, golden section, uh, that's you know likely to come on there as well. So if I'm counting out these eight problems, there's one, two, three, oops, uh, four, five, let's see here, probably six, seven, eight, you know, something like that, I don't know. So you're seeing that, I mean, I can't do all of them, but I'm going to cover a lot of that, okay? All of it multiple choice. You got, you got three hours, so you got plenty of time, okay, plenty of time and uh, for that. So that kind of gives you a sense of that. Um, let me, uh, again, I don't, by the way, on the sample midterm, I don't have a solution to it, but, um, I mean, to solve this, you literally would just throw it in Excel or MATLAB, right? Uh, to solve this, you could probably just figure it out. It says equivalent to solving. against. I mean, you should be able to figure out if this works or not, right? <laughs> um, to solve this, you should be able to figure it out if it works or not, right? And you could graph the function. You could do different things. Um, you can just solve that anyway, right? Uh, this one might be a little harder, uh, but you know what? If you did it, um, you could probably realize when you go, if you did it right, it'll iterate towards it, okay? Uh, but that one's probably a little harder to check. Um, this one, oh, yeah, that should be pretty easy to check. So you can do a lot of checking on your own. I mean, that's probably the only one that would be hard to check is this one. Um, to see if you got it right. And if somebody wants to send me one and say, hey, I did it, does it look right? Okay, I can look at it. So um, so anyways, let me just real quick show the page here where we're at. Uh, this test again covers modules one, two, three. Okay, so we're covering modules one, two, three. And now, by now you've hopefully got homework one, two, three in, which is gonna be the big help. By the way, I posted homework four on the uh, McGraw-Hill Connect, and there's now a homework for programming part here. So as soon as you get done with the test, you can start working on homework four, okay? So um, now I've got time for questions, if anybody has a question on anything.
I'm happy to um, answer any questions anyone has. So, and if not, then we'll be done early, and that's it. But um, you can feel free to use your mic if you want to, or uh, type it out. I don't care. Uh, if anybody has any questions, I want to make sure I've got time for that. For those of you, okay, go ahead. Those of you that are just watching the recording, you know, there's not a lot of people in the room. So, okay, great, great. You answered all the questions. Great. Excellent. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that um, I had a time to uh, interact with everybody if there was any questions or anything like that. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Dr. Wayno. Yeah. For the question number six in the symbol. Okay. Yes, you asked for the Newton method, which is the Newton method for optimization, right? Let's see here. You're talking uh, question number six in the sample midterm. Let me go here. So, yeah. So when I say find X star that minimizes this function using three iterations of Newton's method, what I'm saying here is Newton's method for optimization. So what I'm saying is that when you do this, okay, this function, you're going to take the first derivative divided by the second derivative. So it's going to look like it's going to look like this equation right here. Okay? You can see the the Newton the Newton Raphs equation, but instead it's going to be the first derivative divided by the second derivative. And if you do that, it will actually solve for the it actually won't you don't know if it solves for the minimizer or the maximizer. You actually don't know that unless you, you know, check and there are different ways to check. You know, you might have remembered the second derivative test and things like that, right? But uh, for the purpose of this class, I would never give you one that wouldn't work. You know, like I wouldn't give you, like I will give you an initial guess. I'll always give you an initial guess. And then just remember that when I say Newton's method, I'm talking about first derivative divided by second derivative. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, sounds good. And like I said, homework four is up. Everything's up. Uh, also, the the uh, you should be able to see um, on Canvas the listing of midterm exam Monday, midterm exam Tuesday. Again, just pick one. Don't do both. Just do one. Uh, doesn't matter which one you do. You don't have to tell me or anything like that. So, okay. Well, if anybody has further questions, I'd, I'd invite them to reach out to me via email. So, thank you, everybody. Oh, hold on. I got another question. If it's multiple choice, will there be a Dropbox for scratch paper? No. No, there's not. Um, but um, I'm testing this theory, okay? So, the, 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 the question really is, really is kind of, well, what about partial credit? What if I, um, what if I, goof up and I'm you know I don't get one of the answers because you know there's four answers there and, and I don't match and I get a zero you know what if it was a small mistake well I'm trying to make the problems easier to to counteract counteract that and I will tell you that I did this in statics and in statics we just had a midterm and people did better than last year's midterm which was a traditional paper midterm People did better. So if that's the case here, we won't have to worry about it. Now, if it's the case where people do worse and the average is lower, then when it comes to the final, I'll probably do a Dropbox for scratch paper or something like that. Like, I'll probably do that if it goes bad. You know, I'll say, okay, this went bad. Therefore, um, you know, I'm going to have to to look at your work a little more. You know, maybe try to get partial credit. But I, I actually try to make I try to make the problems easier. Like I'm trying to make this test easier. <laughs> I really am. Yes, open book. Open book, open notes. No problem there. 
the the uh, the uh, lockdown browsers there just to make sure you're not on your phone or not on another computer and and that you're just trying to you know do it the right way and not trying to cheat with uh, communications and things like that. But yeah, open book, open notes, all that. Yeah, just remember that if it's all on digital, then it might be hard to access. So, okay, great. Uh, uh, sounds great. And uh, I'll, I'm going to end this here. And if you have questions, reach out to me via email. All right, great. Thank you.